Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 4 of How to Program in C++. In this episode, we are going to create a grade calculator in order to review all of the elements of programming that we have discussed in the last few episodes. So I'm going to get started by creating a new project. It's once again going to be a console project. Programming in C++. Let's name our project something like Grade Calculator. Alright, now let's open up our main file and start programming. So the Grade Calculator will be for just a theoretical class with, well I'll just uh, make some stuff up and then we'll just go from there. Oh, so this is the grading structure of our theoretical class where you have homework assignments worth 20%. You'll have two exams worth 15% each, a final, and then a project for 20%. And then just for testing purposes, let's say five homework assignments. So what we know we need to do is find an average homework the average between the exam. We can use the final grade and project grade as average. And then we just need to multiply it by these percentage values in order to get the final grade. So now, when programming, it's always best practice to know what you need to write down in order to have your desired end result. So what we want is for the user to define scores on each section. So we're going to be using our C in and C out statements. And then we want to calculate final grade. And then we want to display final letter grade. Now let's think of what variables we are going to need. We definitely want one for each of the categories and they should be of type float because they can be anywhere between 0 and 100 and just for accuracy's sake we do want the decimal place. So I'm going to create a float for the homework score and we're going to initialize it to 0.0. .0. We're going to create a float for exam, final, and project. So float, exam, float, final, oh. Okay, so something important to note is that if you see this blue highlight, then that means it's a reserved word. You can't use it to name variables. So I could name it something like underscore final. That could easily get confusing, so I'll just do final exam. Alright, and then one more for the project. So we have our variables. Oh yeah, final one for final grade. Hmm. Also, since we are just going to display a letter grade, we can use a just see out the actual letter itself instead of using a character to store it. So the first thing we need to get is our homework score. Now, since we know that there are five homeworks for this class, we should be using a for loop. And yes, you can declare a variable in your for loop, but that variable will be limited to inside the for loop. So if I had i out here, try initializing and setting i to 7, this i doesn't exist, at least not in this context. So just keep that in mind. So i is less than 5, we're incrementing i every time we loop. What we want to do is see out 
our grade for homework I. And what this will do is just say grade for homework. Actually, we should say I plus 1. That way we say grade for homework 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then we want to see out. I like seeing out a colon. It's just a personal preference. That way the user knows that they have to input some value. And then we want to see in the homework. And then here, I'm just going to take the value of homework. Actually, actually, there's one thing else I need to do. I need to create an actual score variable to store in these values. So I'm going to create H score to hold in your actual score. Because every time we would use C in, we'd overwrite the homework value. So I'm going to set H score to be incremented by homework. So by doing this, if I were to see in a certain value for H score, every time it would increment H score. And then just to get the average homework score, I'm going to divide it by 5 by using divide by equals then 5. And just to make sure I did this right, I am going to see out homework score and then the value of H score. So let's build and run. Oh, error. Let's see what this says. Huh. Oh, I know why. So, you can't actually say 5f because numbers like 5 are integers. And the letter F is just a flag for floating point. So what this is trying to do is just take an integer and make it and assign a character that's usually for floating points. You can do that when using Unity, but not for, well, you can do this 5F in C sharp, but not for C++, which is strange to me. Oh, well. So grade for homework 1, let's say, I'll just do all of them as 80, and if I did that right, the average should be 80. The average is 80, perfect. And just one more test, I'll make one of them 0, and the rest 80. Yeah, that, that's about right. Now it's the same premise for this every single time. At least every time we want to calculate another grade for a different segment. So if we have this exam, I'm going to create a float exam score, initialize it to zero, and since our code is basically the same as what we have here, I'm just going to copy it and then paste it. So once again, this time we have two exams. I'm going to ask for the grade for exam, and then C in exam score, and then set exam score plus equals exam, and then set exam divided by 2. And then just to make sure I did it right, I want to see out E score. And I'm just going to, I'd like to display all the score values at the end, just to go with the entire final grade that you get. So grade for homework one, I'll just mash some buttons. Okay, exam one, say 75, and then exam two, 85. 
Oh. Did I do something wrong? Let's see. Okay, I found my error. I want to see in exam, not e-score. So now when I build and run, and just mash a couple buttons because I don't care about the homework values. So if I were to say 75 for this one and 100 for this one, 87.5, that sounds about right. Okay. And then since our final and project consist of only one thing, we just have to see out grade for final and see in the final and the project. So I'll do that. Grade for project. C in. Project. C out. Grade for final. And then once again, a C in for our final. Final exam. Okay. And then once again, just see outing the final scores. Although, you know, it will be a little redundant to see out the final and the project because you already know it. Now on to calculating the actual final grade. So our final grade value here is going to be equal to a certain percentage of each of our scores on each of the segments. So, as you can see by this Excel file, homework is worth 20%. So, 0 0.2 multiplied by the homework score plus then our exams, which were 15% each. So, that would be 0 0.3 multiplied by our exam score plus we have 0 0.3 multiplied by our final exam and then one more plus and that's a 0 0.2 multiplied by our project okay so then, just as a test, I want to see out, see out the final grade, and then the value stored inside final grade. It's a new line. Well, let's see how that adds up. I'll just mash a couple buttons. So homework score, final score, that's odd, it's not listing the project score. Oh yeah, right, this is those. And just to clean things up, I'm just going to see out new lines. Most people don't really care about the formatting. I mean, if you're being graded for formatting, most teachers don't grade for formatting. It's really just being able to read your code and making sure your program does what it needs to in the most efficient way manner possible. So, that's really just something important to know. Now we're on to the last step of our program, and that's displaying the final grade, or the final letter grade. Now, I think the most effective way of doing this is to use a switch statement that outputs something based on the value of our final grade. But wait a minute. Our final grade is a floating point value, which means it has decimals. So it'll be really difficult to account for all of the possibilities that final grade can be. If it was an integer, it would be so much simpler. But what if I can tell you that we can take this final grade value and convert it to an integer really easily? 
So what I'm going to do is put these parentheses and write the word int in it. And what this will do is take the value of final grade and just return something in the form of an integer. So if your final grade is, say, 78 point whatever, it'll just return the value of 78. But then I'll go another step further and divide this value by 10. That way, we are only receiving values based on actual letters. So if you get a 6, this value returns a 6, you get an F. If it's a 7, you'll get a C. If it's an 8, it's a B. If it's a 9, it's an A. Or a 10, it's also an A. Now, knowing that, we can very easily create cases for each of the different possible grades. So a 10, we'll say C out perfect score. Score, you got an A. Then we'll break a new line, and then we'll do that for case 9. C out, congratulations, you got an A. Then we'll break, and then so on and so forth. So I'll just do that off camera. So now I've got all the cases from getting a perfect score down to getting a D. But since below a D, we can assume that you have a, an F, I'm just going to use the default statement. C out, you got an F. And then we'll new line, and you don't need to break after your default statement, so just keep that in mind. Now I'll just test the program. One for getting, say, an A, so I'll just have values in the 90 range. Oh no, dang it. I'm gonna have to redo that. So once again, values in the 90 range. And I'll just be sure to spread them about. Congratulations, you got an A. And then let's try grades in the 70 range. And then you got a C. Perfect. That concludes the creation of our first program. Just a really simple grade calculator to go over just the basics and just a little advanced technique of converting your different variables. And that concludes it for this episode. In the next one, we are going to go into arrays and structs. So on that note, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.